Today, I want to take some time to talk about rest, because one of the things that I've learned while living in the Netherlands is the meaning of rest and how to rest better. But to talk about that, first I need to give you a little bit of background of my relationship with rest. Growing up in a Korean immigrant family, the concept of rest is almost non-existent. I was taught that you should always be busy learning or working. And if there was any idle time, then you simply weren't learning or working hard enough. In college, the idea of rest never really sank in either because summers weren't for recharging from the school year. Instead, it was meant for internships to prepare you for a job after graduation. And of course, once work started, vacation days were few. Not only that, but I was living in New York City, the city that never sleeps. And so in time, rest became a reward, something that you earn after working long hours. When COVID entered and everyone was forced to slow down, I realized I just didn't know how to, and perhaps that's where some of my anxiety came from. So like many others, I sought out a therapist. My Dutch therapist asked me what I do for rest. I laughed, but oh, this was a serious question. And so I mumbled something about watching TV, but that was a lie because I didn't know how to sit and even enjoy a show. In fact, one of my first memories of dating my husband is seeing him just sitting and watching a show. I had grown up with the idea that watching TV was wasting your time. And so if you happen to sit in front of a TV, you should be doing something else, like washing dishes or preparing dinner. But here he was, so relaxed, his whole attention and time focused on the screen. But me, whenever we sat together to watch TV, within 10 minutes, I would slowly move to grab my phone or get up to go get something to keep my hands occupied. I finally admitted to her that I didn't really know how to rest. I was 33 years old and I didn't know how to rest. To me, rest was the same as wasting time. So she suggested that I set aside time to be more present. If I'm walking, I should stop and stare at a flower. I should stop to think about the color, the shape, the smell. I told her I would try these things and she sent me off with a list of other fun activities for me to try. These included things like drinking coffee, just sit quietly, take a walk, have a picnic, and eat outdoors. I wish these activities instantly cured my ability to know how to rest. It didn't, but it did make me start to observe others around me. And over the last five years, while living in the Netherlands, this is what I've noticed. I noticed that in the Netherlands, when the sun is out, everyone is out. They come out to enjoy the sun. You will see droves of people just sitting outside, not doing anything, and sometimes not even talking, but just sitting with the sun in their face, soaking up the rays. Sometimes they even leave work early just to enjoy the fleeting sun. I started to notice how my colleagues would take time off whenever they started encountering continual work stress. To them, it is important to recharge so that they can tackle problems with more clarity and less emotions. And the most interesting part is that others around them respect their time for rest. I also started noticing how in the Netherlands, self-introductions always include hobbies and rarely what one does for work. There is significance in how you define yourself outside of your job. What gives you peace? What gives you joy? What gives you rest? This should be what defines you. My friends here all have hobbies. They garden, they rent garage spaces to fix bikes or woodwork, they go on bike rides, They do things that bring them joy and rest. I realized that I did not have any hobbies. Everything I did was to achieve a goal. I also started observing my husband and his habits. He dedicates time to rest with clear boundaries. He told me that watching TV is not wasting time because he's resting his mind. It is in itself an activity. And so he sets dedicated slots of time to rest, fully enjoying the moment he has allotted for himself. He is so in tune with his mental health that he knows when to take a break from work to avoid exhaustion. I realize now that my Dutch therapist, with her activities, wanted me to start thinking of rest as not wasting time or even a reward, but that rest is normal and something that everyone needs. And so I am trying. I am trying to reverse 30 plus years of second generation trauma about wasting time. I am trying to reverse years of American busy living. I am trying to find things that I enjoy doing even if they don't yield any results that would tangibly improve my life. 
I started building these miniatures because I like working with my hands. I like creating things. When I'm making miniatures, my mind becomes free and I focus on the instructions and task at hand. My mind finally has space and time to rest while I'm building these tiny replicas that will bring absolutely no worth to anyone. When I first posted about making miniatures, my family messaged me to stop wasting my time. I also got comments from friends that it's nice that I have so much time to do this, but just wait until I have kids. Sometimes I do wonder if I'm viewing rest with too much privilege. But at the end of the day, rest is a basic human need, regardless of having children, health, or socioeconomic factors. We just need to be better about actually doing it. Because if there's anything I learned about rest from the Dutch, it's that it's not a reward, it's not an afterthought, it's priority.